Belfast City Cemetery. Belfast Corporation purchased the land for Belfast City Cemetery in 1866. Prior to this time, burial grounds in Belfast were owned by various religious denominations, but the new cemetery was to be open to all and ground was allocated for Protestants, Catholics, Jews and others. In the end, however, negotiations between the church and the city fathers broke down, with the result that the Catholic Church opened a separate cemetery across the road at Milltown. At the request of the Catholic Church, the land for Catholic burials was separated from other sections of the cemetery by a sunken wall 2.7 metres deep, in effect keeping the Protestants and Catholics apart, even in death. Today, 140 years later, Catholics are buried in the cemetery occupied mainly by their Protestant neighbours. There are no reports of underground faction fights. Since its opening in 1869, around 250,000 people have been buried in the cemetery. Industrial Belfast laid many of its captains of industry to rest here. Sir Edward Harland, co-founder of Harland & Wolfe, the largest shipyard in the world. Viscount Perry, a gentleman apprentice who eventually controlled Harland & Wolfe and was associated with the building of the Titanic. Sir Robert Baird, who owned the Belfast Telegraph newspaper. Thomas Gallagher, who founded the tobacco firm of the same name in the 1860s. Also buried here in the Jewish plot is Daniel Jaffe, a Hamburg-born linen merchant whose son Otto became Belfast's only Jewish Lord Mayor. Daniel Jaffe was the first leader of Belfast's once thriving Jewish community and opened the city's first synagogue in Great Victoria Street in 1864. It was on Daniel Jaffe's request that the plot was granted to the Jewish community for burials and he was the second to be buried here. Among literary figures buried here are Robert Lind, the celebrated essayist, and Reverend R. R. Kane, a leading Church of Ireland clergyman and orange man, who justified his enthusiasm for the revival of the Irish language in the 19th century by declaring, I may be an orange man, but I can never forget that I am an O'Cahan, Gaelic form of his surname. Other people of note include Sir William Whitla, leading physician and medical author. The Whitla Hall at Queen's University is named after him. Vera Foster, a champion of the poor in Ireland and an educationalist, and W. H. Lynn, architect of many of Belfast's most prominent buildings. In the field of sport, we have Elisha Scott of Liverpool, Belfast Celtic and Ireland, and Rinty Monaghan, a world champion boxer and the first Irishman to be honoured by the Boxing Hall of Fame. The grave of C.S. Lewis's mother, Florence, is also in the cemetery. Lewis, perhaps one of Belfast's most famous literary sons. Lewis was a novelist, academic, medievalist, literary critic, essayist, lay theologian and Christian. He is also known for his works of fiction, especially The Screwtape Letters, The Chronicles of Narnia and The Space Trilogy. Lewis was a close friend of J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of The Lord of the Rings. Both authors were leading figures in the English faculty at Oxford University. Lewis's works have been translated into more than 30 languages and have sold millions of copies over the years. The books that make up the Chronicles of Narnia have sold the most and have been popularised on stage, in TV, in radio and in cinema. Also expect to find the resting place of Lord Craigavon's father, who was the managing director of the nearby Dunville Distillery on the Grosvenor Road. His son James was the first Prime Minister of Northern Ireland in 1921. Some of these names may be familiar to you. They are part of the history of Belfast, but all human life is here, or was here. There are paupers and prostitutes, soldiers, sailors, solicitors and hawkers, clergymen and craftsmen, airmen, artists, architects and artisans, lots of politicians and a single parish priest. There are nurses, nuns and lots of nonconformists, nationalists, unionists, socialists and lunatics, Orange men, coal men and masons, builders, brokers and jokers. Some actors, directors, managers, inspectors, journalists, methodists, geologists, a typist and a cook. We have counsellors, sculptors, travellers, reporters, theologians, criminals and mill workers. Professors and pawnbrokers, Lithuanians and suffragettes, left-wingers, right-wingers and bell-ringers. Many visitors visit the cemetery, particularly during the August Fela when guided tours are conducted. 
For further information on these tours, contact Anne Holterlin on telephone number 02890 964 180.